In this video, I wanna show you how to spin the camera in Premiere Pro, so it will follow your subject as they spin. It's a pretty cool technique, and as long as you know somebody that can do a flip or you have some sort of subject that is doing this kind of motion, you could do it yourself. Let's dive right in. To start off with, in a perfect world, it would be best to do this kind of movement while you're shooting it. So that means taking your camera and actually rotating it along with your subject as they flip. But in my experience, it's extremely hard to keep your subject matter in the center of the frame as you rotate rotate your camera. That's because of the ergonomics of how you hold a camera and also just how our arms are built on our bodies. It just makes it hard to make a full 360 turn with a camera in your hands. The same could go for a cell phone. Because the cameras aren't on the center of the device, it makes the axis in which you rotate the phone a little bit off center. I was able to get decent results if I just rotated the camera 180 degrees instead of the full 360 spin. The big drawback here is that you start with your framing upside down and then end with it right side up, which may look okay if this is the kind of effect that you're after, but we want that full 360 turn of the camera with your subject. And the smoothest way that I've found to accomplish this kind of shot is to artificially rotate your video clip in post. So here's a couple pointers in order to sell the effect the best. The first thing you should do is have the person or subject be perpendicular to your camera, meaning that your camera will see a side profile of the person or object. This will make it look the best when the camera is turning with the person. The next tip is to leave enough negative space around your subject in the frame. This will allow you enough space to punch in on the subject to avoid black bars on the side as we rotate the clip inside Premiere Pro. For that reason, it's best for you to shoot at your highest resolution, something like 4K, and then edit your sequence in HD. That way you can punch in and post without losing a lot of the quality. Right here is the clip that we've been referencing this whole time. As you can see, it's 120 frames per second and it's shot in 4K. That's it's vertical video, so it's 2160 by 3840. But our sequence settings are 1080 by 1920, that's nine by 16 vertical video, and it's at 23.976, which is close to the 24 frames per second. I'm gonna click and drag this onto my timeline, and I want to maintain my same sequence settings because this is HD, and I'm editing that 4K footage in the HD sequence. Let me go ahead and minimize this now so we can see what we're doing. As you can see, once I move this onto the timeline, it's actually punched in two times. So if I were to take my scale and zoom out, there's actually more footage here on the outsides. So again, that's because I'm shot in 4K. So I'm gonna make my scale 50 for right now. I'm also gonna go down to my clip and make this slow motion. So I'm gonna right click, do speed duration, and for 120 frames per second in slow-mo, I'm going to do 20%. Now we have reached our slow motion, but we need to rotate the camera as he flips on camera. I'm gonna make my program monitor bigger just so you can see what's gonna happen next. I'm gonna hit the plus sign on the bottom right-hand corner of my program monitor. I'm going to do show rulers, I'll drag that on. I'll do show guides, drag that on as well. And I also wanna make sure that I have safe margins, which it's already there, but if it wasn't there, I would click and drag that on as well. I'm gonna hit okay hit show rulers, that brings up your rulers right now. And then with show guides, click and drag in this gray space and bring that down to right where my middle area is on the screen. You can see from these little crosshairs, you can't really tell the horizontal crosshairs right there, but they're there. Also with the vertical crosshairs. So I clicked and dragged over from this margin. And now I have an exact crosshair for the middle of my frame. I'll unshow my rulers so that can be just a little bit bigger and bring this back. Maybe we'll start with about 80% scaled in. And instead of using position to keep my nephew here in the middle of the frame, I'm actually going to use the anchor point. And the reason I like to use anchor point to move the frame for this specific technique is because anytime I use scale, it's going to scale from the middle of the frame. Let me move to where he starts jumping. I'll, maybe I'll start right there. Gonna hit the stopwatch on my anchor point, scale and rotation. Now I'm going to move my anchor point a little bit. Let's say his waistline is what we want to keep in the middle. And now I'm gonna go about five frames ahead and just move my anchor point down. Notice how once I move this, it creates another keyframe. And then I'll continue the same process until I start to see him rotate. Once he starts to rotate, this is where I'll start making keyframes for my rotation. But the thing that I like to do to make this easier, and I think it looks the smoothest, is only make 
two rotation keyframes and then adjust from there as need be. Whenever I add too many rotational keyframes, notice how it just kind of jumps every single time it rotates. That's what I'm looking to avoid, this kind of jitteriness in the rotation of the frame. What I found what works best is to make your first rotational keyframe then speed through the whole clip and end it wherever you would want the camera to stop rotating. So right there, if I am flipping with him, I think I'm flipping this way. Yeah, I'm flipping that way. So that means I need to go all the way to minus 360, which is minus one. So I'm just gonna check it here. That will flip with him. And now we just need to adjust where the anchor point is and the scale. Another thing that I like to do with the rotation is instead of having a linear motion, what I like to do is right click, do ease out and then right click and do ease in on my keyframes there. So instead of a linear motion, it's going to accelerate and decelerate in an exponential form. I know this all kind of doesn't look right at the beginning, but trust me, once we line up those guides, this will all make sense. Now onto adjusting the framing of the anchor point throughout the entirety of this clip. To do this, I'm just hitting shift right on my keyboard to skip five frames and adjust the framing to those crossed hairs and repeat that process with the anchor point until I'm done. This is what we have so far. Doesn't that look awesome? What we're really looking to do is get rid of these black bars here and we wanna scale in just enough so they don't show up while we're rotating the camera. We're gonna to go to our first scale and I'm actually going to scale out just a little bit because we have that room. I'm gonna move until we start to see black bars, which is right here. And what I will do is just scale in until I don't see those black bars and it looks like 91. Then I'm gonna move the camera and it looks like we get more black bars the most around right here. So let me scale in until we don't see that. So 108 as we come up just a little bit right here. So I'm just gonna scale in just a little bit more, scroll through. And as we get to this spot, I know that we're not gonna see any, so Maybe I'll make just another keyframe right here and then I'll start to zoom out as he enters into his landing. We'll zoom out just a little bit more like that. So here, boom, pow. I think the zoom in is a little too extreme. So what I might try and do is get rid of that and see if we don't get any black bars as we zoom in. Yeah. That's perfect. That's so cool. Just to recap, scale, rotation, and anchor point are what you adjust in your effects control monitor. And you just go five frames by five frames throughout the flip. And I think it looks best if you don't try and really manipulate your rotation keyframes other than the start and the finish. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave me a like. If you know somebody that knows how to do a backflip and you wanna do this technique, I'd highly encourage you to. I think it's a really cool looking thing. If you do end up shooting something like this, Tag me at Javier Mercedes X on Instagram. I love seeing what you guys create. And until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. My name's Javier Mercedes. Bye.